Okay guys, I'm back again. This time with a quick unboxing, setup, and first start on the Kipper Sign Master IG-1000P. I want to go ahead and thank the good folks over at Kipper Power Equipment, North America, for sending me this unit for review. Uh, if they hadn't, I wouldn't be able to review it for you. And I'll be reviewing this guy over the next couple of weeks, up until around a month, uh, to give you guys a full evaluation of it. So let's get started with the unboxing. A uh, fairly small box, much smaller, much lighter than a traditional style generator. This is an inverter uh, style generator, so you're going to get clean power, uh, quiet operation, as well as better fuel economy. So let's go ahead and get it started here. So opening it up here, let's take a look at the box in there. Got a few oil stains, um, not too sure what that's from. Uh, might be some residual oil that they had left in the unit from testing and as you can see the box has certainly been beat up uh, from the uh, shipping service uh, UPS that was used so that's not unusual but here we have this little uh, baggie here I don't know if you can see that I'm going to go ahead and come closer but we have a spare spark plug we have a DC charging cable uh, as well as a little oil bottle in order for us to add oil to the unit. I have a little baggie containing the unit. And we'll just pull that out. Set that to the side. There's the unit itself. Let's see what else is in the box here. Uh, we've got some foam padding. We also have some... Uh, Let's see. It's definitely a spark plug tool. So we have the spark plug tool here. Just a little rod and the actual uh, tool itself. Okay, guys, so I figured it out. Uh, the oil came from the unit being uh, placed upside down during shipping. Uh, was actually coming from the air filter area. Uh, the filter was kind of soaked at the bottom. I've had it sitting this way uh, for a few minutes now. Hopefully the oil has drained back down enough to uh, get it started. Uh, it was very little oil to begin with. Uh, already opened it up, made sure nothing was on the electronics or um, exhaust components and it was dry. It was just limited to the uh, air filter area. So. Let's just show you around the unit here. Um, first we have the uh, main side which is going to have your uh, choking lever. You have a start and a run position. Basically choke and open. Uh, we have the recoil starter screen. We have an on off uh, switch which controls the electronic ignition as well as the fuel flow so it will actually shut off the fuel as well. At the front we have the uh, circuit breaker. We have the DC charging port, which also has a little fuse and a little red light to tell you when the fuse is blown. We have the smart throttle, which will control the RPM of the engine, depending on load. We have an output indicator, overload alarm, as well as a low oil alarm. Here we have the parallel kit, that's why this is called the IG-1000P. Uh, the previous one didn't have it, it was just the IG-1000, but this allows the unit to be paired with another IG-1000. I also believe it can be paired with the 2000 and the uh, 2600 IG series of generators. Uh, you have a grounding area, and you have two grounded 120 volt North American style plugs. On the back side of the unit, you have the area where you can access the spark plug for quick changing. That's where you would use the spark plug tool. You have a little sticker here that uh, tells you not to start the unit because there's no oil in it. At the back, you have the exhaust with the spark arrestor. Uh, in order to access and clean that, it looks like you just have four screws uh, to access it there. At the top, and you can see just how light this unit is by the way I'm handling it. You have your gas cap, your carry handle, and at the bottom you have your rubber feet. So pretty cool little design. Um, 
I'm just going to go ahead and start getting it set up so that we can start it. So the only thing you're going to need in order to uh, open up the generator is a little flathead screwdriver. This has a nice uh, flathead screw here. It's actually metal so it won't wear out. Uh, the screw is so let's go ahead and get this undone. Okay. All right. So to add the oil, you're gonna need three basic things. You're gonna need the little cup it came with. Uh, the cup contains a hose. That all you have to do is unscrew it screw it back onto the uh, tip and then fill this up with oil. You're going to need a roll of paper towel as well as conventional 10W30 motor oil uh, that we're going to use to break this unit in and run it. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do to add the oil is simply locate the dipstick oil fill section. Here we have the dipstick which is pretty much low uh, does ship with you know residual oil because they have to test these at the factory make sure they work before they ship them out to customers uh, so you may find a little bit of residue or in my case uh, if your unit is tossed all around and uh, upside down by the shipping company you may have a little bit of residual oil uh, some other places but filled up the oil cup um, we're just going to add oil until the oil starts to run out um, here we have the uh, the upper level is right at the end of the dipstick and the reason you add oil until it runs out is because you have to fill that crankcase with oil due to this not being uh, operated by a oil pump. Your car has an oil pump which will circulate the oil. These generators have a splash lubrication system uh, which has a little paddle that splashes the oil around so you can actually fill it all the way up uh, without worrying about overfilling it. So let's just go ahead and fill it. Alright guys, so before we put fuel in it, I went ahead and brought it outside just for safety reasons. Uh, also because we're going to get ready to start it here. But what I'm going to be doing is giving you the first start, seeing how many pulls it takes. It may take a few more since it was um, turned upside down. Some of the residual oil got into the uh, carburetor so hopefully it'll start up for us maybe a little smoky but I'll be taking the uh, voltage readings from the AC portion as well as the DC portion I'm gonna run it for at least eight hours you're supposed to run it between eight and twenty five hours to properly break in the engine um, I'm gonna run it with a small fifty watt uh, table fan just to make sure that it uh, that's putting out good power as it's being broken in. But first, let's go ahead and get the gas in here. It's got a 0 0.7 gallon gas tank. It's got a little fuel strainer down here. As you can see there, tank is bone dry. And we're just going to fill it up. I've got a little 2 gallon uh, gas tank here, which should. Um, should provide enough fuel for around two or three fill ups in the start position as far as the choke goes so it's in start position we're going to turn this on switch here from the off position to on uh, give it a few seconds to go ahead and fill up the carburetor and we can also assist that by giving it a few dry pools just very slow pools what this is going to do is um, help that fuel get pumped into the carburetor as well as uh, go ahead and lubricate the cylinder before we do a first uh, start on this. So give it about five of those. Alright, and that in the start position. I'm gonna go ahead for the real start now. So let's see how many pulls it takes. First pull. Okay. 
power getting power. As you can see here. All the uh, indicators are green. Uh, we have a green output indicator. The overload and oil alert are off. Uh, fans putting out good power here. We're going to check the voltage. In eco mode, you're getting a straight 120 volts. 120.1. Take eco mode off. And still, same voltage. That's just, that's just showing the advantage of an inverter generator hopping system it is. Next we're going to take this uh, DC plug, plug it in, and see how many volts we're getting from that. Alright, looks like without a load, we're getting 21 volts. That seems kind of high, but once you put it under a load, uh, it should even out to around a maximum of a nice 14 volts at 5 amps. Let's go ahead and take it out of eco mode see what it does. It's a little bit higher, 28.8 volts. Uh, we'll hook this up to a battery and make sure that it's uh, putting out 14 volts on the load. Uh, it's now got around 11 hours on it. I uh, went ahead and ran it uh, without redoing that video. Did some yard work. As you can see my grass is cut. Cut my hedges and everything. Uh, with it and ran that big box fan which pulls around a hundred watts and then the uh, the little 50 watt fan which was in the other clip uh, ran that for three hours and I ran that box fan for eight hours for a uh, total of 11 hours of operation so one thing I noticed is after the first 30 minutes the unit got a little bit quieter I'm um, guessing because the exhaust uh, got broken in and the engine's definitely broken in well now because the uh, manufacturer wants you to change out the oil at 10 hours of operation. That's just in case there's any metal shavings or other particles uh, during the manufacturing process that may be left over in the engine. Um, they also don't want you to run too heavy of a load on there, no more than around 50%. And of course with me, I ran just a fraction of that. Um, it, it can handle 900 watts continuous, 1000 watt surge, and I ran that 100 watt fan. By itself, it's the uh, biggest load it's ever handled. So um, I think the, actually I may be wrong, the hedge trimmers probably use a couple hundred watts, but that was an intermittent load uh, running for no more than around 50 seconds as I trimmed my hedges, but uh, fairly, quiet now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sound measurements uh, with the smart throttle on as well as off and I'm also going to be comparing it with a standard generator a non inverter generator which just has an alternator uh, this is a newer style um, so it's fairly quiet itself it has a large automotive style muffler on it as you can see there it's a big muffler which is uh, which makes these modern generators uh, quiet. Of course, the Kipper is going to have a uh, soundproof enclosure, which is going to help it out a lot more. Plus, it has the ability to uh, lower its RPM. Uh, but compared with, say, a generator that's 15 years old that uses a lawnmower muffler, uh, this is going to be a heck of a lot quieter because uh, it's a little bit more modern. It's around five years old, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you how loud the big one is then run the kipper without the smart throttle and then with it on to show you just the uh, difference in sound level uh, so shop force claims 72 decibels this guy claims 54 to 59 decibels uh, depending on if you have it in smart throttle or not I kind of have it angled this way because the uh, fuel tank is near empty and we're on a slight incline so more gas gets in the carburetor but choke is on and both of these have been running for around five minutes at 92 decibels 92 all right so we're at the uh, around 23 foot mark and we're at 82 roughly 
Now this isn't scientific, the exhausts are pointing in opposite directions, the shop force is of course pointing towards the garage, kipper is pointing towards the deck and plus they're enclosed on three sides so they're going to be quieter in an open space. 45, 50 feet, something like that. Much quieter. We're at 68 decibels so even though it's a regular generator that big muffler definitely helps it out a lot. So fairly quiet. Turn on the power switch and fuel. Put it in the uh, start position and pull. Eighty-seven decibels, right next to it. That's in the um, loudest mode, the none smart throttle. Seventy-seven, around twenty-three feet away. And we're at 61 decibels, uh, around 45 feet away from it. So let's go ahead and put that smart throttle on and uh, see how much more quiet it is. But it's fairly quiet even in the uh, full output. Alright, so we're at 84 decibels right next to it. Seventy-seven, but the wind is blowing as you can see, so that may have affected it. Uh, Seventy-seven decibels at 23 feet. And we're at 57 decibels, uh, around 40 feet away from it now. The manufacturer claims 54 to 59, but you have to keep in mind that it's enclosed on three sides. Uh, it's very close to that deck. It has a fence behind it, as well as that garage and an open field is probably how they do their uh, testing. So it's fairly quiet. I can barely hear it. In fact, in the house, uh, even with a couple of windows open, you can barely hear it. And of course, with the windows closed, you can't hear it at all. So, let's go ahead and shut it off. And I'll have uh, more video on this later. This was just a quick preview. Uh, right now, it has 11 hours on it. I'm gonna do the uh, initial oil change, which should have been done at 10 hours, uh, just to get any metal particles out of there uh, from the manufacturing process and then I'll be able to run a uh, significant load on it. I was only running 100 watts before because it was a break-in load. So as always guys thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.